look at that. Shooting all over the place. And the cameraman's giggling. Welcome to the Camo Chef. Today's recipe is Greek potatoes. So, Greek potatoes. What makes them Greek? A little feta cheese, a little olive oil, a lot of lemon, some salt, and some herbs. Wonderful side dish when you're out camping, wrapped in a foil packet, cooked on the fire. It's delicious. Type of potatoes vary on what you can find at the grocery store or whatever your potato you prefer. The options are endless. Make this recipe your own. This is about three recipes I've combined into my own, but the principles are the same. The flavors are there, and that's what's important. We're using um, a number of small potatoes. Normally you want one medium-sized baked potato per person. The flavor is very intense with the combination of the saltiness of the feta cheese, the acidity of the lemon, the earthy flavor of the olive oil. You're going to want extra. People are going back for seconds. You can peel your potatoes or leave them rustic with the skin on. Today we're going to leave the skin on. I am, uh, I've taken a brush and already washed these potatoes really well. So they're all set to go. Other options, uh, take all this out, make it at camp. We're doing winter camping. Our early winter season right now, it gets dark by about 4.30 in the afternoon. I don't want to be doing this at 4.30 in the afternoon. I want to be socializing around a campfire enjoying a drink with everyone else before supper. So I am going to prep it tonight, put it in this container, then we are going to enjoy it for supper tomorrow. An additional step I'm doing because we're winter camping is planning ahead. I'm going to cut these potatoes up, place them in a glass bowl and microwave them to get them just before fork tender. After that, I'll mix the marinade, toss the potatoes in it and leave them in the container overnight in the fridge. That's gonna help them absorb the flavor but by microwaving them, it speeds up the cooking process. So we're not waiting around for the potatoes to cook tomorrow with cold temperature outdoors and a hot fire. It's going to cook evenly. They're going to brown up and warm up on the fire. And overnight, they're going to absorb that flavor from the marinade. So we're going to start off with prepping. You have the option of peeling your potatoes if you don't like the skins on. I like a little rustic cooking when I'm camping, so we're going to leave the skins on. You want nice bite-sized pieces. They're a little large. Try to get them consistently the same size so they cook evenly. I've kind of guessed the amount of potatoes portions for everyone coming to camp tomorrow. We're at our trailer, uh, our winterized trailer. We have to walk in. We, we can't drive into it. The snow, uh, the roads aren't plowed to our trailer. So I'm trying to make this as light and as efficient as I can. As I've talked about on other videos, you have to look at your trip, look at the people coming on your trip to decide your recipes. It's very important to take a moment and make everyone enjoy themselves. If people don't like certain foods that are here, then wrap a baked potato in a piece of foil and have a baked potato for them. Don't force them to eat things they don't like. Camp is about having fun and get the fun outdoors. I've made a lot of extra because I know people go back for seconds because I've made this before. Um, so we've microwaved our potatoes. So depending on the number of potatoes you choose to use for your portioning, it depends how long you're going to microwave, the strength of your microwave. I put a little water in this bowl, microwaved it at four minute intervals till it's just slightly before fork tender, which you can see now on the sexy close-up shot. See? Goes in with very little resistance but it's still quite firm. I wouldn't eat these at this point, but they're gonna be baked on the fire, wrapped in a foil packet. So 
These are perfect. We've cut down probably a good 20 minutes on the fire for cooking time. So we're ahead of the game tomorrow when we relax at camp. I'm going to toss these into this dish. The Irish grandmother would be proud. Okay. What makes this Greek as opposed to Sicilian, Italian, or whatever else? I don't know. I don't work for the UN. Here we go. We're going to kick this up with a little olive oil. We're making a marinade to coat these potatoes in. That's a little extra virgin olive oil. We're going to add some zest of a lemon. I have this fancy microplaner. Other people have zesters. This is an optional thing. It just adds a little more aroma and flavor. You don't have to do this if you just want to put the, the juice of a lemon. If you don't have fresh lemons, use lemon juice. You're trying to go two-thirds oil, one-third lemon juice. Sometimes half and half, depending how lemony you want it, how acidic you want it, how intense of a flavor you want it. For that many potatoes, which are equivalent to about eight medium bakes, I'm going to add the zest of a full lemon here. And then we'll start adding lemon juice till we're satisfied. I love this microplaner. Don't ask me in the comments where I got it. Oh, I do. I know where I got it. I got it at Pampered Chef because I'm pampered. My wife loves me. I want to clean the back off too. Not waste any of that lovely flavor. Okay, so we have olive oil and lemon zest. We're going to put the juice of at least one lemon in there, possibly two. We'd really want the flavor of the lemon, but we need the oil in there to coat the potatoes so they don't stick to our foil and to help them brown up because one of the best parts of this is when it does brown, you end up with that nice charred potato edging that makes them so delicious. So we had fish for supper tonight and I have these leftover lemons that I'm going to squeeze in here that don't fit properly in this thing so bear with me but I'm not going to waste anything. Oh look at that shooting all over the place and the cameraman's giggling. So I've made this at camp from scratch. I've made this at camp already cooked and warmed up on the fire and I've made it this way before. Every time I've made it it's been eaten up with no leftovers whatsoever. So that's the juice of two lemons. That was a quarter cup of olive oil. That was the zest of one lemon. We're going to add some salt to taste. You can always add salt after. You can't take it out. So don't get too carried away with the salt shaker because there's salt in the feta cheese that are going to spice these up anyways too. So we're done with the salt. My cardiologist would be happy. We got some oregano. I have about a tablespoon of dry oregano here. You could use fresh oregano to your flavor, um, to your preference of flavor. We're about to add some garlic. Now you can use fresh garlic. I've gotten into garlic paste lately because my wife and I are living alone and this seems to last longer in the fridge than garlic going bad. And we want to add about half a garlic clove per baked potato. So we're saying we have eight. So I'm going to add four good dollops of this garlic paste. Again, preference. If you really like something garlicky, add more. If you don't, back off on it. Whenever I add garlic to recipes, I add parsley. It's a natural breath freshener. That way people at camp will get along and not hate each other because they all have garlic breath. But when Dracula shows up, he's out of luck. I have this lovely marinade and I don't have a whisk. I'm not very prepared. So hopefully Vanna will run and get me one. I've got some feta here. The amount of feta you want, again, is preference. I like the salty cheesy flavor mix throughout. I usually add about a, a tablespoon, thank you, a tablespoon per potato. Other people I'm sure would prefer less. I wouldn't go more than that because then you're just going to have a cheese mess in with your potatoes and most of this is going to end up melted on the foil. You're going to get the brine flavor in there. You're going to get the nice saltiness flavor and of course that distinct feta flavor. So as you can see by our potatoes and this, I'm going to add a bit more feta. You could add this to the potatoes directly and stir them in. Because I'm going to stir these before I pour them into the, uh, the foil packets, before they go on the coals, I'm not really concerned if I put these in the marinade or directly on the potatoes. Uh, the advantage to using a container like this instead uh, is I can shake it up and mix it up as well. And uh, then I can also recycle, rather than waste pla plastic and affect recycling and stuff by using a Ziploc bag, 
by using this, I can also bring leftovers home if that actually happens, and it's not going to happen. We're going to eat all of them, guarantee it. I'm going to blend all that together. You don't have to be perfectly blending it because this is all going to soak on the potatoes overnight in the fridge. It's going to spend all day marinating in the cooler, and then it's going to marry all together in the heat of the fire in the foil packet tomorrow night before supper. Now, before I put this in the foil packet tomorrow, I'm probably going to add either olive oil or butter to the foil packet just to help the greasiness of lifting the foil off and to help it brown up a bit better as well. I wish you could smell this right now. The potatoes are like par cooked and you've got that potato flavor. You can smell the lemon and a little hint of oregano there. And in the middle of a cold, dark winter night supper, we're going to enjoy the Mediterranean. We'll finish this up tomorrow on the fire. See you then.